Okay, there you two. Now it's time to hit the freeway and see what this thing does against this crazy headwind. Holy moly. Yeah, uh, that's a headwind for you right there. So, I have to say that shield is, is absolutely perfect. Now, when I say it's a perfect shield, you gotta, you gotta understand what you're comparing it to. And it does have a little bit of helmet noise there, a little more than a little more than I was expecting. But you gotta remember that wind's hitting me at probably 90 plus miles an hour. I mean that is a substantial headwind. And um, a little bit of a little bit of high frequency buffeting of the head. But uh shit that's absolutely something I could live with. I'll, I'll take the freeway for a for a jaunt here and see what see what I think. Maybe I'll turn off the Kalama and take those back roads through there or something. But uh yeah a little bit of a little bit of a frequency buzz in the helmet. But man I I know this thing never shows the trees how far they're bowing over. But uh yeah you it's a that's a healthy, healthy headwind. That's not like going down the Columbia Gorge headwind. But, uh, well, you know, <laughs> could be. It's pretty good. It's hitting me pretty hard, I can tell you that. I mean, it, the wind the wind hit me in the bike. It, it feels like I'm going about 100 is what it feels like. I'm sure it's more realistic, realistically around 90. But still, that's a... Uh, for that shield to be performing this well with this headwind going 75 miles an hour man I am not complaining at all I have zero complaints that other shield would be murdering me right now but what I was going to say it depends on what you're comparing it to um, if you've been riding a, a gold wing or an RT or a full dress Harley or something like that yeah there's you're you're getting a lot more wind. But you gotta consider the bike that you're buying. It's it's this is a sports cruiser. This is a go fast, have fun, take a trip if you want to type of a thing. But this shield I could absolutely I I wouldn't even give it a second thought of going across country with this thing. It's, it's comfortable enough for me. It's uh, way less wind than, than, say, like I get from the from the, 88, the Iron 883. But, you know, in all fairness, that's not even a fairing. I mean, a windshield is just a little quarter fairing or a cafe fairing type of a thing. So, that's really not anything to compare it to. Ooh, that feels good to put my feet on them back bags. Oh, man, does that feel awesome. I just wish they were more like my iron. It feels more like a sport bike. This thing here, I feel like I should be holding on to reins and running around the Kentucky Derby or something. But it just feels good to fold my legs up. I'm always comfortable that way. I, like when I sit in a chair, I always sit with my legs crossed. I, it's one of those things. Why do we do the things that we do? Why? But hell yeah, it's a, it's a pretty good amount of helmet noise with that headwind. And uh, yeah, like I say, there, there's some high frequency buzzing. If I look way, way like at the mountain range way back there, um, yeah, you can see your vision getting, getting jostled a little bit. But uh, yeah, I, that's, that's not a problem. Because you're not going to be driving in the headwind all the time. Well, you know, that being said, I've gone on trips where I've spent an entire day fighting a headwind. <laughs> Actually, coming back from, uh, 
from the Utah meetup that second day from Twin, Foys, Twin Falls, Idaho until I uh, almost made it to I-5 in Oregon. That was a brutal headwind. And hot, oh my God, hot. But yeah, this is fine. So yeah, I would, if you're looking at, at a shield, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't discount the uh, Blue Ridge from, from BRP by no means. It's not RT comfort. And look, if you're, if you're buying an F3 to get RT comfort, you're a, uh, hold on. Yeah, if you're buying an F3 to get and trying to get the comfort of an RT, you're going after the wrong motorcycle. That'd be like buying a, a Sportster 1200 to get the comfort of an Electroglide. I mean, why would you do that? I mean, what, what is the thought process there? I know people, what I see is people go, wow, well, an F3, I can get into an F3 for, you know, 20 grand or depending on which one you get, you know. And uh, I'll just turn it into the RT. It's never going to be an RT. I'm sure some aftermarket, good God, that's a big hole. Some aftermarket guy will probably come up with some huge sail to stick on the front of this thing that'll look ridiculous. But uh, even though, you know, you looking at this, it may seem big from the outside of it. Looking at the bike, it doesn't, it doesn't look bad at all. It looks very similar to that Route 129, just with the with the kicker, and it's got that little lip at the top that you're probably staring through, and the road's doing weird things. But so, anyway, to uh, this is probably uh, not very good sound with the with the wind blowing on me and stuff. This the shield's way better, but it, it is it is pretty noisy. So. Uh, wouldn't make the best uh, motor vlogging in a headwind, that's for sure. But as far as riding, I have no problems with it. And, uh, is it as comfortable as the RT? Not in a million years, not even close. Like I say, the best way I can explain this is like, you know, trying to compare a, you know, a, a touring bike to a, to a sport bike. About the best you're ever going to get out of an F F3 is basically a maybe to the level of a sport touring bike. Now, if you've ridden a touring bike and you ride a sport touring bike, I mean, you actually question how these people drive these things this many miles. But you know, that's that's that style of bike. So uh, you know, keep that in mind. And a. Uh, as far as touring on this thing, I, I wouldn't have a problem with it. With some bags and big old duffel bag on the back seat and some saddle bags draping off the side or maybe the hard bags from VRP or whoever. Yeah, it wouldn't be no problem touring on this thing. But it would be like riding a sport touring bike. You're not gonna have that fluffy comfort of a Goldwing or an RT or the big BMWs or something or a, or a big Harley you're just not going to get that comfort but then that Harley and that Goldwing and that RT is not a sport bike so you got to decide what you want what's more important to you long distance comfort you know miles and miles and miles down the freeway on a long tour or do you mostly want to have fun and then, uh, you know, take a tour occasionally. Got to make a choice. So, as I'm whizzing through Kelso, Washington, I'm going to say adios. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bail out. I'll probably hit some back roads or something here somewhere, and I'll probably come back on. Get out of this freaking wind. So, uh, until then, we'll chat with you later. We'll see you now. Bye-bye.